Hotel Bellacoola will not be seen tonight, so we may bring you this special presentation of Hotel Bellacoola. Man's tireless curiosity and bottomless thirst for adventure has spurred him to explore the farthest reaches of our planet. So it was hundreds of years ago, and so it still is today. And so it was on a spring day in the first winter of the third millennium. A close-knit cadre of internationally renowned adventurers set off for a week of challenging the implacable bitches of Bella Coola, British Columbia a remote outpost first settled by wayward sailors from Polynesia. It was a week they would never forget. the farthest reaches of our planet Bellacoola. has spurred him to explore the farthest reaches of our planet Bellacoola. has spurred him to explore the farthest reaches of our planet Bellacoola. Bellacoola. so it was hundreds of years ago and so it still is today a close-knit cadre of internationally renowned adventurers. A close-knit cadre of internationally renowned adventurers. A close-knit cadre of internationally renowned adventurers set off for a week of challenging the implacable pitches of Bella Coola, British Columbia. half-crazed Canuck who can often be found cutting fierce tracks through the Whistler backcountry. It's just in. Winter is a full-crazed Canuck who likes to kill it off any natural terrain hit he can find. Chris Eby is cut from the same what-me-worry cloth as his buddy Winter. Hobbies include pool, soft puppet theater, and hucking his meat off 80-foot rock bands. His advice to the novice? Keep your wheels up for landing. Leanne Patterson shows her fellow Whistlerites how to stay grounded. She's got legs. She knows how to use them. She must be really mad at the snow, because look at Leanne rip it up. 
Per Gustafsson came all the way from Sweden to show his North American friends that disco may be dead, but Scandinavian skiing is alive and kicking. Here he shows 15 to 19 year old women named Inga how to say, I am loving this. I am loving this. I am loving this. I am loving this. In Swedish. <laughs> Rex Werman has two U.S. extreme free skiing titles, the respect of his peers, a pickup truck, and a total hottie for a fiancé. These are among his last turns as a bachelor. We'll have to await for a Saturday in June to see him knocked off his feet. Too much of a good thing may be bad for you, me, but too much of Alison Gannett is not enough. You don't win World Extreme titles and Women Free Skier of the Year awards for the asking. You have to earn it. And no one earns their turns like Allison. Darian Boyle could have been a runway model, or she could have been a skier cross champion. She chose the latter. Says Darian demurely, ski modeling is just like fashion modeling, only the runway is 4,000 feet straight down, and screaming is allowed. Kevin Smith heard that all his skiing bros from Whistler were headed to Bella Coola. He didn't stop to ask questions like, why do snowboarders who rest on their kneecaps resemble prairie dogs peeking out of their burrows? All he heard was, peeking, and he was gone. In Japan, Goro is big, really big. Not Godzilla, I'm going to eat all of Tokyo and snarf Osaka for dessert big, but big. Once Goro-san found out that a whole pipe was better than a half, he took to big mountain boarding like an otter takes to water. All weeks come to an end 52 times a year, and so it was with this one. The troop packed up and loaded into the chopper for what they assumed would be a long flight home. Home turned out to be a lot further away than anyone thought. Almost unbelievably, the chopper had deposited them back at the lodge. Only then did our gang realize that they were the only people at this lodge. No help, no staff, no guides, a guru, but no guru. No one could remember what the chopper pilot's face looked like. Over a game of deja vu billiards, Allison informs the team that she secretly possesses magnetic powers. Alarmed by her own confession, Allison falls into a trance convulsing violently as she surrenders to her magnetic powers. Her transformation complete, she indicates the North Pole using her entire body as the arrow of a compass. I thought she was supposed to be pointing the way out. No, she points north. She's magnetic. Suddenly, she spins completely out of control. All sense of direction is lost. Werman sums it up best when he says, Tomorrow, we climb. Taking matters into their own hands, the plucky band climbed the steep walls that separated them from the river the ocean, and freedom. Their turns are all the tastier because they are mixed with the sweet elation of escape. They plummet right to the water's edge where they are miraculously met by a local guide, hermit, an amateur squirrel surgeon named Elvis. He has brought boats for everyone. As sunset begins to tinge the clouds red, they come across the natural hot springs. Their bones aching from the day's long exertions, they soak in steamy bliss. Suddenly, their merry mood is mauled by the muffled whoop of helicopter blades slicing the air. The beast is back, its ominous message clear. No one, no one escapes from the The next morning, Darian takes a bullet for the team by performing a tantric cleansing ritual meant to break the spell that holds them captive. No dice. Allison attempts a breakaway by rock climbing. The team tries escaping through the forest. They try biking away. Allison and Winter commandeer horses, but no matter how viciously they flail at their flanks, the horses plod in a purposeless circle, as if controlled not by reins, but by an invisible force that speaks directly to them. Gustafsson realizes that he alone may hold the key to escape, 
the Swedish star sends a feeble message to fellow Swede Jun Olsen, seen here practicing a rare form of Swedish semaphore on a glacier close to the Arctic Circle. Olsen flies high to pick up Gustafsson's distress signal, then jumps over and over to spell out his reply. Half a world away, Gustafsson can barely pick up the signal. Olsen's ancient form of Viking skywriting, Gustafsson deciphers to read. Talk to the goat? That evening they played croquet for keeps. It was a raucous match, and when it was over, the decision was final. They would climb to the highest peaks, find a goat, and talk to it. Still weak from a dinner of red-tied mussels Allison made the night before, the group barely makes it to the top. Delirious from the altitude, the group can hardly believe their eyes when they stumble upon a mountain goat. Are you the goat we seek? Gustafsson calls out. You were expecting someone else, the goat replies. How do we get the hawk out of here? What the heck do I know? I'm a goat. Got any moss? For the first time, the group's spirits sag. They know that down in the valley, the chopper awaits them. Tomorrow will be the same. It is perhaps this crushing knowledge that causes the group to lose their concentration. One after another, they take off down the hill, only to have the dark forces that keep them captive cast snares about their feet and yank their skis and boards from out from under, from whom, from fop, from fool. It seems as though the mountain itself is saying, we don't care who you are. Your five-part video resume is nothing to us. You want it? Come get it. It was like skiing and riding at the all-you-can-eat-it buffet. Take a turn, meet snow. Straight line, meet snow. Stand, eat more snow. Suddenly, Gustafsson snaps. His battery's almost dead. He sends a frantic call to Olsen who received the urgent message while at a major big air event. It comes through loud and clear. The goat's no good. 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 Olsen is puzzled. What goat? I never said goat. I'd better signal pair back. He takes to the air again, spelling out a clearer message that Gustafsson is just barely able to make out. Walk like a ghost. Walk like a ghost may not sound like a clearer message to you, but you are not Alison Gannett. Alison Gannett interprets ancient petroglyphs, which put her into a deep trance. When Alison recovers from the trance, she knows exactly what to do. She leads the group through the forest, where they come upon a giant tree, which embodies the very soul of the Jesuit mountain. The group holds hands, and as they circle the tree, their bodies become pure energy, join into one being, a being that connects with the tree and the mountains. The spell is broken as the group turns to butter. Arcane. Oh, oh, butter. Arcane. Butter. Arcane. Oh, 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 butter. 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 I can't believe it's not butter. I am going to my trailer and I'm not coming out until this is fixed. When our gang boards the chopper this time, their bodies will be home. But like actors frozen forever in time by film, their spirits will forever reside in these mountains, where those who visit them often find they can never leave.
come on. We're off. We're gonna be young again. We do it again. Still recording. Us ah, back in the studio. Yes. Who told you to stop? That's nice. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sir. I no no disrespect intended, sir. the chopper this time, their bodies will be homeward bound. But like actors frozen in time by film, their spirits will forever reside in these mountains, where those who visit them often find they can never Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pomposity brought to you by Olivier. My gown is, of course, my brother. Lipstick is by Max Factor.
Tá, tá, tá.